Today, Intel and Micron are introducing the world's smallest semiconductor process technology, 25 nanometer NAND technology. So, X equals five. As you were walking through the fab today, uh, you were walking amongst not only 34 nanometer wafers, but also 25 nanometer wafers, which are running through the fab and facilitating the completion of our qualification process and the continuation of our customer sampling process. I bet you couldn't tell the difference. Uh, and neither could I, but fortunately, these guys can. Uh, so we're excited about the, the evolution of this technology. Just a few quarters after our introduction of 34 nanometer technology, the, the process is healthy, yields are good, and we're on track uh, to the commitment we made to ourselves uh, and to our business uh, over a year ago. We, of course, will have uh, a number of devices based on this technology over time. The first of those devices is the industry's first monolithic 8 gigabyte or 64 gigabit MLC NAND device. And I have one here. This is not actual size. This is. So 167 square millimeters. Uh, twice the capacity of our highest density 34 nanometer part in roughly the same footprint. So uh, in a given space, our customers will be able to provide double the density, double the storage capacity as our prior generation. Uh, so this, will be, this, this device is sampling today. We've had excellent feedback from our customers in the early going. Uh, and we're on track to begin production of this device and begin shipping it in the second calendar quarter of this year. I did some quick manager math, Dave, and I hope we got it right, but if I look at how many of these devices are on a 300 millimeter wafer, and I do a little math that luckily is mostly multiplication, um, you know, there are trillions of bits of NAND uh, on a single wafer. Uh, I think something north of 20 trillion bits, if I'm not mistaken. And so the numbers in this business are really staggering. Uh, and this is indeed the, the densest MLC NAND device on the planet. You know uh, what kind of applications NAND has found its way into over the last several years. With this one device, you could store about 2,000 songs, about 7,000 photos, uh, or about eight hours of standard definition video. Uh, so that's pretty amazing. Or with two of these devices, you could load the complete Windows 7 operating system. I wanted to share a few more thoughts with you regarding uh, this 25 nanometer process announcement. If you think about this, uh, 25 nanometers, you know, I think we all get somewhat inured to the constant announcements coming out about process shrinks and, and, and this and that from the logic industry, from the, from the memory industry, but 25 nanometer is something pretty special here, not just in the NAND world, but frankly in the entire semiconductor world. Uh, folks, you're not going to find a more advanced process in production anytime soon. 25 nanometers really is uh, quite a hallmark process. Just by way of comparison here, uh, to put this in, in context, uh, if, uh, if you take a human hair, roughly 75 microns across, you stretch that out to a mile, what we're doing for a 25 nanometer line or space uh, is akin to about 21 inches in that kind of a metric, okay? And this is no gimmick, by the way. Uh, we've all seen some, some process announcements where you take the smallest uh, geometry available on a die, for instance, that might be in some small spot of the corner and you can't actually find where someone's measuring it. This is the, the true lines and widths and spaces available in this NAND die array. So if you look at uh, just one of these chip plots, for instance, these arrays here are built out of repeating 25 nanometer lines and spaces. That's pretty tough to do. And, uh, you know, we have to say Micron and Intel in partnership with IMFT are phenomenally proud with our progress uh, on this front. You know, I came really from the DRAM side of the house and uh, I see a lot of parallels right now in the NAND industry to what the DRAM industry went through roughly 10 to 15 years ago where everyone collectively knew that, that the end of the shrink path was one more generation right around the corner. There was no way to get past that. And, you know, certainly the challenges are pretty steep. We can't say that they're, they're always easy to solve, but by evidence of this 25 nanometer node, we are finding the answers to these further shrink paths and are uh, pretty happy with, uh, with how this is looking. By the way, I should mention, uh, 
We get questions all the time about uh, multiple bits per cell, greater than two bits per cell. And I'll just say that Micron and Intel in conjunction with IMFT, uh, we are, as well as every NAND manufacturer, working on greater than two bit per cell technology. Uh, unlike most though, we never saw that as a proxy to stop shrinking. So we have been just as aggressive shrinking the technology uh, to get to the ultimate cost per bit. And frankly, with what we're seeing on 25 nanometer, I have to say that uh, we believe we made the right choice. The kinds of cycling and retention that we're getting out of this technology today uh, is significantly greater than what we're seeing from a lot of the, uh, uh, frankly, uh, lagging generation uh, greater than two bit per cell processes out there today. Now briefly on the interface, uh, Micron and Intel together are supporters of what we call ONFI, uh, the ONFI consortium. Uh, we've been very pleased with this and this L74 that, that Tom showed you is in fact, uh, uh, it, it subscribes to an output standard, interface standard called ONFI. And uh, this is uh, this has been very successful for both of us. We see this as the right path forward. Uh, it's, it's a standard that is very much akin to what Intel and Micron have driven in the DRAM world, for instance, using standard synchronous interfaces to up the speeds. That comes in handy when you start putting together solid state drives, for instance, that rely on high speed uh, synchronous communications between chips. So this, this L74, uh, it does subscribe to the, the ONFI 2.2 interface. Uh, it will have speeds uh, significantly greater than 100 uh, megatransfers per, per second. Uh, and both companies right now in the ONFI consortium are working on the next standard, which is ONFI 3.0. That will take us up, by the way, to double data rate speeds uh, up to 400 megatransfers per second. We do see this collectively as the right path forward, specifically for NAND optimized around computing applications. Now, uh, I'll, I'll tell you right off the bat, this is a floating gate uh, cell technology. Uh, we, as well as the rest of the NAND industry, know that at some point, floating gate will become very difficult to do. Uh, we continue, uh, as with the others, to look into uh, really what you would call charge trap memory uh, techniques. Uh, but I will say that this technology is floating gate uh, and it is holding up very, very well. As a matter of fact, uh, staying on floating gate has really let us keep the same kind of performance levels that we've been accustomed to over the last few generations. And uh, just to, uh, to close off here, uh, you get to something like 25 nanometer and uh, you think, you know, we, uh, we start to see a few things that uh, do, uh, that the others are not yet seeing, specifically with regards to future process scaling. Uh, we, as well as the others in the, the industry, are certainly interested in taking things vertical uh, when the, uh, for instance, when the path to, to uh, further photo scaling is no longer available to us. Uh, this is not necessarily imminent. Uh, but there are several techniques out there that, that give us both faith that there is a further path to shrink progress in the NAND world. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is a, a, a picture of a DRAM, and frankly, if you think about it, this is in production today, this is the kind of thing that gives us faith that vertical, if that's the path forward, is easy to do. This technology exists and is in production today. If you think about the kinds of things that happen above the surface, specifically with these layers, the interfaces that need to happen. Uh, this is uh, production proven as, uh, as how we build our DRAMs today. So there is a path forward in NAND. Uh, the kinds of, of application improvements that Tom was speaking about, we're both pretty proud about how 70, uh, this, this technology today, 25 nanometer, further opens up that, that path. And uh, going forward, we do see a further roadmap. So, very, very pleased about it. We think we have a, uh, quite a long ways to go. It's been a good partnership.